Marathon talks on Iran's nuclear program have failed to produce an agreement, but the hope remains that there will be one in the future. While world powers tried to push ahead, France revealed itself to be the most skeptical in the Western camp, refusing to accept any short-term deal. RT's Tessa Arcilia reports on the meeting's stumbling blocks. The uh, three days of talks here, high-level talks that have started off with a lot of optimism, had ended with essentially no deal. So we know that the nature of these talks were very important in the sense that the ministers who were here in town had dropped and changed their schedules in order to come here and join these talks. So there were a lot of speculations that a deal might be reached, but in the end, it didn't uh, come to, to, to pass. Uh, Laurent Fabius, uh, the uh, foreign minister of France, was one of those who really was vocal about his uh, reservations on the initial test presented and uh, uh, in detail one of those uh, reservations would be the stockpile nuclear stockpile of Iran as well as the uh, reactor that's scheduled to open sometime next year in Iran he said he was not satisfied that he wanted something an agreement that was serious as and also he had said something like he France was not ready to get involved in a con game and this had angered lawmakers in Iran they were saying that France here really was hindering the talks and had blamed France even uh, calling it a, a blackmail on Tehran. But what's interesting is when uh, EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton, as well as the foreign minister of Iran, uh, Jalib, had came, come in here to give their press conference, they were kind of upbeat and they were hopeful about the next round of talks scheduled for November the 20th. And uh, Zarif had said that he was not disappointed and that uh, he understood that something like this, there, were defi there, there will definitely be differences among the different parties involved. But really, it had taken quite a, a different turn from what was expected when we were hearing statements uh, coming from foreign ministers uh, of the UK, uh, William Hague, uh, saying that uh, they should seize the moment and to trying to come up with a very elusive deal. But in the end, indeed, there is no deal that has been reached. But again, talks will be rescheduled on uh, the November the 20th. And uh, some of the main sticking points on the table were a reactor that Tehran could possibly use to produce weapons-grade nuclear fuel and how sanctions relief would proceed. Let's have a closer look at how uh, the deal the negotiators were trying to put together. Here we go. Uh, first, according to some sources, uh, the six world powers want Iran to stop all activities to enrich uranium at 20 percent. Iran would also be obliged to limit the number of centrifuges and allow more intrusive monitoring of its facilities. In return, world powers would unfreeze some of Iran's assets and perhaps ease sanctions that have crippled the country's economy. And uh, earlier, we talked to Kaveh Afrasiabi, a former advisor to Iran's nuclear negotiation team. He thinks that despite the French resistance, Tehran has actually played its hand very well. It was the singular contribution of the French government to throw some monkey wrench in the process and managed to sabotage the deal, basically. There's a very strong uh, pro-Israel lobby in, in Paris, and, you know, the, there's a cozy relations between Paris and Tel Aviv. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that the Iranian team came with good intentions, with a detailed proposal, and proved their good faith in their negotiations. There is no doubt in my mind and minds of a lot of other people, including millions in Iran, that a lot of the responsibility for the absence of a deal tonight rests on the shoulders of the French government. And before the uh, talks began on Thursday, thousands were rallying in the Iranian capital, chanting death to America and uh, burning Israeli flags as well. Uh, despite Iran's new leader pushing for a nuclear agreement, many of the country are outraged uh, by their government's dealings with the West. RT's Paul Scott investigates why. The Islamic Republic of Iran is ready to engage immediately in time-bound, orientated talks to build mutual confidence and the removal of mutual uncertainties. Hassan Rouhani's recent speech at the UN General Assembly was said by many to represent a thawing in relations between Tehran and Washington, a sign that the Iranian leadership is keen to initiate warmer ties with the global community. But not everyone is keen for this to happen. Hardline conservative protesters threw eggs at the president upon his return to Tehran. And now those uncomfortable with the idea of increased diplomacy with Washington have launched the first ever Down with the USA contest. The idea is to find the most creative anti-US propaganda. Contestants are invited to submit photographs, posters, caricatures, poems, hymns and blogs, 
all relating to the slogan, Down with the USA. Over $3,000 are up for grabs for the winner. There will be a prize for the best idea to mark death of America, which will renew the concept of death to America because of the arrogance of America. The message is clear. For as long as the U.S. policies are hostile to us, we will continue to use this slogan. Well, the slogan first came to prominence during the 1979 Iranian Revolution, when the U.S.-backed government was overthrown. And since then, it's been widely used by critics of Washington. Those critics now fear Rouhani's willingness to re-engage with the U.S. could undermine the revolution. They also see no reason to start diplomacy with a country that for years has portrayed Iran as the enemy and subjected the country to harsh economic sanctions over its nuclear program. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. This administration has systematically imposed the toughest sanctions on Iraq, uh, on Iran ever. The United States is not going to lift the sanctions until it is clear that a very verifiable, accountable, transparent process is in place. Despite efforts by the U.S. government to suggest the sanctions aren't affecting the general population, food, clothes and even basic medicines have rocketed in price in recent years. And the leadership's attempt to engage with Washington has led to anti-American slogans and banners appearing all over Tehran in recent weeks, with Rouhani demanding many be taken down. Paul Scott, RT.